Hey Grace Church, my name is Josh. Welcome to the weekly for the week of June 18th. Today we are talking about Ananias and Sapphira. So in Acts chapter 5, we get a story of a husband and wife that sell a piece of property and then they bring it to the apostles. They tell the apostles they sold it for this price when actually they sold it for more. They hold back some of the money and ultimately they both die because of this lie, this hypocrisy. And we talked about how this seems like a very harsh story. Like why would God choose to punish them so strongly for such a small act, such a small lie? And and many of us are shocked that God would kill them for this, but we're not so shocked that they schemed a plan to deceive the church. And so what's, what's interesting is that most of us are used to grace. We're so used to grace that we're shocked by justice. Uh, theologian John Stott, he said, Ananias and Sapphira wanted the credit and the prestige of sacrificial generosity without the inconvenience of it. Their motive in giving was not to serve the poor, but rather to serve their own ego. And so in, in the story, you have a sign, uh, just like all the other miracles are signs, where God is pointing out something. And here's the simple way to say, He is pointing out that the secret sin will not be tolerated. He's warning the church about secret sin, and he's reminding the church that the uh, mission is supposed to go forward on a people who are holy. And so the, the lie the enemy wants you and I to believe is that secret sin in your life and the church will not hinder the mission of God. But the truth is the mission was always supposed to go forward on holy people. And so the, we, we took that and we said, here are three things that secret sin is, is hindering in your life. Uh, number one, secret sin is hindering your spiritual power. Uh, the, the scripture tells us that the devil entered their heart and they began to scheme and that they lied to the Holy Spirit. And so we, we shared this truth that, uh, it's the same thing we shared two weeks ago, that we have this secret place invitation from Jesus. And if we don't live in the secret place with Jesus, then we are much more open to secret sin. And so these two options are before us. If you want to fight secret sin, the way you do that is in the secret place with God. And so your, your spiritual power that's available to you Uh, is directly related to your secret spiritual life, that you have character from who you are in Christ, and that then plays itself out in the real world. Um, We we have the option or the opportunity from God to have spiritual power, but when we live in secret sin, we often hinder that power from being manifested in our lives and in the world. Uh, Number two, we said secret sin hinders gospel community. Uh, The Bible said they schemed together. They agreed on lying and stealing. And we talked about needing people in your life who will confront your schemes, people who can show you where you're blind. We talked about having uh, lives that are so rooted in Christ and rooted in community that we are not fragile to receive feedback. Uh, We need to be tougher Christians that can handle other people's opinions of us and not feel like that people are being unloving and oppressive just because they're holding us accountable. And so Christian community in the Bible, it's not just social. It's spiritual. It's, it's because our lives are on the line. And uh, Christian community is not just about loneliness being healed. It's about our secrets being healed as well. Uh, and that's, that's just one of the hardships of the gospel, that the gospel confronts sin. And gospel community that does not confront sin is not the community Christ came to create. You need people in your lives that will tell you the truth about you. You need people in your lives that you can share the intentions of your your heart, you can tell them you're struggling with dark thoughts, you're struggling with doubt, you're struggling with comparison. You can say, hey, I'm being rude to my children, will you help me? You need people who you can share your secrets with. And if you don't have those people, then you're, you're missing out on the joy of community. Uh, and, and the gospel community, it represents the gospel. And in the gospel, you're free to share because Jesus has, has achieved something for us. In His achievement of victory over sin, Uh, Now, our doubt and struggle, they're not viewed as weakness, but they're just viewed as part of the journey. The doubt and weakness are just a normal part of the journey. So we can freely confess those things because Christ has already conquered those things. Yes, it's risky, but it's definitely worth it. So the last thing is secret sin hinders your ability to live on mission. Uh, If if you need motivation to find holiness, um, how about the fact that God has called us to carry His name to the ends of the earth? Uh, In light of that mission, we should have an urgency to fight back against sin. Uh, But sadly, many of us, we we don't fight back. And and God is patient with us in our sin. And His patience is designed to lead us to repentance. But often, uh, His patience makes us more bold in our sin. Uh, And that's that's grievous to God. 
that we would be more bold instead of being more repentant. Uh, yes, God has been gracious to us, and that grace is intended to make us more of a confessional people. Uh, and we can be a confessional people because of what's happened in Christ on the cross. Our sin has already been exposed. We've already been found out. And because of what Christ has done for us, we can now fight back against sin. And so we closed out by giving three really practical things that we can do to fight back. Number one is you never make peace with your sin. Uh, time is not going to heal you. You're going to have to fight against sin your whole life, and you can't make peace with it every single day. Even if you failed last night, even if you failed the night before, even if you did it again, just never make peace. Continue to fight back. Number two, never pretend that if someone asks you about stuff, don't lie. Don't gloss over it. Tell them what's really going on in your life because the whole Christian life is one rhythm. Sin, confession, repentance, repeat. Sin, confession, repentance, repeat. The story is not sin, hide my sin, run from community, leave God, but rather sin, confession, repentance, repeat. So just don't pretend that you're doing fine if in fact you're not. And then lastly, we said never wait to get caught. You should want to be outed. You should want to out yourself. The question is not whether or not you're going to sin. The question is how are you going to be the person that deals with that sin? Can you honor God and honor the gospel as you confess? Uh, so my hope is that this week we could be a real gospel community that confesses sin. And we can do that in Jesus' name.